This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this lecture is on chapter six, and as you can see, it's called uh, Limiting Factors. Uh, and it does look as though it's a terribly short uh, chapter, only two pages. Uh, but as you'll see, um, it, there is quite a lot involved. And so I will split this into uh, several lectures, otherwise it um, doesn't give you any time to think. Um, the technique we're going to use before I explain uh, what the problem is, is something called linear programming, which some of you may have heard of. But um, before I say any more, let's look at the example and see what the problem is. <coughs> looks a very tiny example on the second page. Example one. Uh, Peter makes two types of chair, the executive and the standard. Uh, we're told how much materials each chair uses, two kilos for a standard, four kilos for executive. Uh, we're told how many hours of labour each uses. And we're told the contribution. Now I explained what contribution meant um, in the previous lecture on throughput uh, accounting. Uh, and of course, one way we could have made the question a little bit longer is instead of telling you the contribution, uh, I could have talked of the individual factors, you know, the selling price, each of the variable costs. But you know how to do that from the previous lecture, but that would just be a little bit extra time, that's all. And so, of course, it does look as though executives are um, the best chair to make, highest contribution. But we've got a problem. There's a maximum of 80 kilos of material available each week. And so whatever happens, uh, there is a limit to what we can produce. You know, four kilos each for an executive, we could make 20 executives. At two kilos each for a standard, we could make 40 standards. Or, of course, a mixture of the two. But we can't use more than 80 kilos. And on top of that... The labour hours are limited. We know each uh, chair takes either five or six hours, but if there's only 180 hours available, there's a limit on how many we're capable of producing. Now, demand for standard chairs is unlimited. So I can sell as many as I produce, no problem. But the maximum demand for executive chairs is 10. And so, uh, I think very obviously, uh, whatever happens, we're not going to produce more than 10 chairs. We don't have to produce 10. We might decide to produce fewer but, and more standards. But clearly, there'd be no point in producing more than 10. And our job is to find the optimal production plan. How many of each chair should we make? And the maximum contribution that we'll generate as a result. There's the problem, and it's those limiting factors, the limited resources, that we can't use more than 80 kilos of material, we can't use more than 180 labour hours. Now, as I said, the technique for solving it is something called linear programming. If any of you have done it before, then you might be aware uh, one method is a method called simplex which involves setting up a grid and just playing with numbers. It's quite good fun. However, that is not in the syllabus. If you're tested on linear programming, which you will be somewhere in the exam, um, you're expected to be aware of what we call the graphical method, which is what I'm going to go through. And so let's go through the steps involved. The first thing we do is set up the problem in terms of, as you'll see, equations. And so watch the steps. To do a whole question in the exam is unlikely, but any bit of this can be asked, so I've got to go through every step. The first step is to define our symbols. Because as you'll see, we're going to set up some equations. And what I mean by that is, what do we want to know we want to know how many standard chairs we produce. So I'll let S 
equal the number of standard chairs. And also how many um, E's, uh, executives are we going to produce? I'll let E equal the number of executive chairs. And that's, of course, what we want to find out. That's what we're after finding. What is S? What is E? Use any symbols you like. I'll let you work out why I chose S and D. E. But if you're happier using X and Y, it doesn't matter. Whatever symbols you want. Uh, one more symbol, though. Remember, the whole object is to find the contribution. So I'll let C equal the total contribution. No problem. Having done that, step two is to write equations for uh, the limitations. Now, again, the words don't matter. It's more important you're clear what I mean by that. Uh, let's look through each in turn. What limits are, are there on our production? First of all, there's a limit on the materials. The most materials we can use is 80. Well, if we produce S standards and E executives, how much materials do, do we need? Each standard needs two kilos. So if we make S standard, it'll be two S kilos that we'll be using. And in addition, if I make E executive, since each executive uses four kilos in total to make E of them, we'll need four E. So there's the total material that we're going to be using. And whatever it comes to, it can't be more than 80. Now, quite importantly, the restriction is we can't use more than 80. Maybe we will end up using 80 kilos, or maybe we'll end up using less. It's just we can't use more. And so the total we use must be less than or equal to 80. Nobody says we have to use 80. If we only need 70, we'll only buy 70. Uh, in a similar way, well, every restriction, what about labour? We have a limit on labour. How much labour do we need? S, each one needs five hours, so five S. Each executive needs six hours, so six E. And again, the total, we're limited to 180. It must be less than or equal to 180. Any other limitations? <clears throat> there could be any number of these. Doubt in the exam you'd have many, but there could be. Uh, the only other limitation is uh, the demand. Now, for standard chairs, unlimited, so no restriction on the S's we could sell. But for executive chairs, uh, the maximum is 10 that we can sell. So clearly, uh, there's no point in producing more than 10. E must be less than or equal than 10. We don't have to produce 10, but we can't produce more. Uh, finally, because we're doing this using a, a bit of algebra, you know, we're just using symbols and forgetting these are chairs for the moment. Uh, there are, in fact, two other constraints which we call the non-negativity constraints. In the whatever answer we end up with for S and for E, we obviously can't end up with a negative answer. We could end up deciding to produce zero standards or zero executives, but we certainly can't produce a negative number. And so S, whatever figure we end up with, it must be more than or equal to zero. And similarly, E, greater than or equal to zero. 
And so there we are, we've written equations for our limitations, or another word is constraints. And whatever answer we end up with for S and E, each of those inequalities must hold true. Finally, with regard to setting up the problem, um, we write an equation for our objective. I was numbering the steps, so this is step three, I, know, I can't remember. Uh, but what is our objective? Our objective is to maximise the contribution which is C, remember. And what is the contribution going to be? Well, if we end up producing S uh, standards, each one is $6, so in total we'll generate 6S. And similarly for executives, in total, at $9 each, it'll be 9E. So depending what answers we get for S and D, that equation tells us the total contribution. And we want to make sure we end up with S's and E's that give the maximum value of C, but at the same time, values of S and E which don't break any of those constraints. So I hope we're all here okay so far. Uh, this can be asked in various ways in your programming, but within the MCQs, it could just be setting up some of those equations or given a choice, which is the, are the correct equations. Um, I said earlier, any bit of what I do in this series of lectures, any bit of it can be asked. Uh, it's less likely, well, for some reason it's impossible to, to be asked the whole thing. Anyway, there's the first bit. We've set up the problem. What we've got to do now is go about solving it. And as I said, we're going to use the graphical approach. But we're going to pause. Make sure you are happy with that. And if you are, carry straight on with the next lecture where I will actually solve it.